Hosts on the day, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, Mr. Gilstrap. Good morning. And Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey Matthew. Good morning. Good to be here. So uh, we were having a discussion in regards to some of the bills passed during yes. the break and parental rights. Hoppy did a commentary on the Metro News page. Uh, taken to task Republicans' inconsistencies with laws in regards to parental rights. So you have the right to not get your kid vaccinated, but you don't have the right to transition your kid from male to female or female to male as a parent, right? And he mentioned about four different examples of that in regards to this expansion of parental rights and Republican inconsistencies. Do you see inconsistencies in that, John? Do you, do you view that? And I'm not talking about your personal feelings about whether right. it should happen or not, but do you see inconsistencies in the rules? I do see inconsistencies. I think that anybody who believes in, uh, you know, sort of the libertarian end of things in, in personal freedom and limited government involvement, uh, but then we have seatbelts and, and uh, motorcycle helmets. Uh, and then if you have motorcycle helmets and you got bicycle helmets and that would, I, I think that there's a level of intrusion, government intrusion into people's lives that is, I think everybody's got their acceptable level. It's hard to articulate. Um, and then others are, are on the, well, you know, for the greater good, I'll do whatever is necessary for the common will. It, it's if I need, if I need to suffer, if I need to experience, whatever it is, if it helps somebody else, then why not do it? And those are kind of the, the two extremes. And I think everybody falls on that spectrum somewhere. So inconsistency is inherent in any legislative process, I think, because you, you can't you can't take a principled stance on everything because principled stances lead to absolutism. And that just doesn't work. Mr. Harvey, do oh. you see the uh, what Hoppy is saying in his commentary as being something you'd agree with? I, I would say, of course, there's inconsistencies, and there will always be inconsistencies. There's always, there always has been inconsistencies because what it comes down to is the rallying cry for those out of power versus those who are in power. Be it inner party Republicans versus, you know, what, that's what we have now. Versus, but before that, it was Republicans versus Democrats, and then before that, it was Democrats versus Democrats. It's the side that that can advance their argument, saying, "Hey, we don't." You know, we need local control. We need local control, and then and then they get in power and they're like, um, well, now that we have the the decision making process, maybe and maybe the views different, and and maybe once you get power, you understand that it doesn't necessarily work how how it, you think it should work. It works in a different way, and, and that that you have to work, you know, conform your your principles to make sure that you can be effective, and and maybe that's means incrementalism instead of revolution maybe that's the way the system's set up so you that'd learn make, how to play the game a bumper a sticker bit. right incrementalism instead of revolution <laughs> good bumper sticker well, well i'm i like that maybe mike Hike can pump some of those out and sell them Pan -out printing design. <laughs> yeah. but i but it's it's i think i think we could have this conversation in 10 years i think we'll have this conversation every year for as long as we're alive you know, years ago, I, I worked for a, a trade association, which is essentially a lobbying group. I was not a lobbyist, but the, the point of the organization was to, to lobby for uh, different causes for the recycling industry. And I had a boss tell me at one point, a very honest moment, that the last thing we want, we want to advocate for certain things to happen. But the reality is, once we prevail, then we become useless to the membership on that issue. So there's, mm -hmm. there's more to be achieved through the churn and the talking and the awareness. As long as people are concerned about, there's a lot of environmental stuff, as long as people are concerned about this environmental regulation coming, then they'll be members because they want to fund the fight. But once you win the fight, they said, okay, and they, and they pull back their money. And I think that's true of politicians too. I think resolving issues just means you got to come up with another issue to fight over. So I think the churn is is where my cynicism about politics comes from. It's The churn is the point. Getting elected is to serve, and to serve is to churn. To serve is to churn is your second bumper sticker <laughs> to put out there, Mike. My guy's going to make a fortune off this episode with all these bumper stickers. Via telephone, Delegate Michael Hornby. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, heavy conversation this morning. 
It is. And do we have to continue standing because you're, we're talking to you? Can we actually sit down? Out of touch. The... No, I, I'd, I'd stay standing, especially for you, Mr. Gilstrap. <laughs> Salute your commanding officer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike, yesterday was crossover day, uh, and I know you've got some bills you were trying to get out of the House as well as so they could be considered by the Senate, signed by the governor, become law. What bills have you gotten through that could be considered by the Senate? So I got seven bills across uh, to the Senate. Um, the Gilstrap uh, law is being discussed today. Actually, Barrett's trying to call me right now because I'm going to be heading over to the Senate in about an hour. Okay, what's to, the Gilstrap law? That. He, the, he has to work uh, for free. Biz, Home-based businesses. Um, I thought it was the raw milk bill. <laughs> the, the, the raw milk was passed in agriculture yesterday. Um, I have a couple of education bills. One's for um, uh, uh, science. Uh, you know, uh, science uh, and, and one's for chemistry. That's the plasma games bill. Um, and then uh, I got a couple other bills working. So let's go uh, first with the Gilstrap bill and the home-based businesses. This You yeah. talked about this before. Refresh us. This bill states what? So the bill states that a no-impact home-based business, a municipality cannot uh, charge an extra fee for them doing business. Okay. It will prohibit them from doing business, too. Hey, did you get a financial note on that, Mike? There are, there are only three municipalities that are doing it, but there is no fiscal note on it. Because yeah. that would only, what, uh, decrease revenue to the municipalities, not the counties. Not the counties, not the uh, state. So there's no fiscal note for the state. Mike, did you, the, you would still ha- you would still have to get a business license from the Secretary of State. We're not doing any of that. Right. It's just we're just, we're just saying you don't have to have multiple licenses. Did your small business bill get through this year? Uh, no, it didn't make it out of the house. How disappointing was that to you? Uh, not that disappointing. Um, it had a fiscal note. Um, it had been changed quite a bit, and I, I really, it, once it went into finance, I knew it wasn't. It had no chance. So, um, I, I kind of focused on the other ones once. Once that happened, have there been any education bills that have gotten through that will they be, then be considered by the Senate? I think there's a lot of it, uh, a lot of education bills. I know we, do, we just did uh, fifteen million dollars to um, uh, teach to teachers for uh, their training and ongoing education. So that passed yesterday. Um, we have the uh, plasma games bill that that I had, which was uh, chemi- chemi- chemical engineering um, classes being available for uh, high school schoolers, um, but. We obviously had the the raise that uh, the five percent for everybody. Um, I think uh, we had a lot of education bills passed this year. Is the five the house anyway? Uh, we had heard that Senate Finance Chairman Tarr uh, had uh, concerns about the five percent pay raise bill. I've been told it's actually not a five percent pay raise; that it's a dollar amount. Mike, uh, can you confirm yeah, that? Yeah, it's a five percent when you look at the whole thing, but it is a dollar amount. That's how they broke it down. I see. Do you see that getting through the Senate this year? Um, you know, we just we just did crossover day, so I've, we're going to start looking at Senate bills in the committees I am, and we'll start going from there. I do think it will go through, though. I mean, if you you're, if you're just asking my opinion, yes, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. You folks passed a teachers' aid bill last year, which provided for an aid in uh, classrooms K through three, and then the hope was that an additional aid would get added. Maybe each year as it went along, so you had AIDS all through K through three. Is that happening out of any legislation this year? I believe there is some legislation that is making that happen. I think it was an automatic um, kick, uh, kick in, and in the budget that I saw from the Department of Education, it automatically kicked over money for new AIDS. So there could be an additional aid then, so each school would have two if they could find them and hire them. Well, they'd go for, yeah, yeah, grade one, grade two, yeah. Yes, okay. Mr. Yeah. Gilstrap. So the uh, teacher carry bill, is that going to survive in the Senate? Um, that'll be an interesting one. Um, I hope it does. I mean, I, I don't see why it wouldn't run. Um, I don't, I can't see. If it runs, I think it'll pass. What does that mean, if it runs? Well, you know, the, these 
they've got a whole bunch of house bills. They get to choose which bills were actually run. Not all our bills were run. So, I mean, we, we had a voter safety uh, bill that last minute got pulled off the agenda yesterday, and it just didn't run. It was on the agenda. And, you know, when the, the sponsor of the bill was upset and why doesn't it run, he was told we put it on the calendar, calendar management. And, you know, the chairs and the leadership have that right to pick and choose what runs and what doesn't run. So is that a, a, a Craig Blair level of, of decision? I think it could be. Um, it could be. I don't know exactly how the Senate works, but I think all the. I think the, the Senate works on their caucus. They're, they're, you know, they've only got what thirty of them, so the caucus decides what runs and what doesn't run. I think the chairs decide what runs and what doesn't run. Well, um, John Doyle was on the show the previous segment, and we had sort of a full-throated discussion of the baby. He calls it the baby Olivia bill. I'm not sure if that's actually the the, the name of the bill. Are you familiar with this? And what are your thoughts on it? Uh, I'm a co-sponsor. I think it's a great idea. Okay. <laughs> so so I, I think we're, I think the House version. I didn't think. Uh, I don't think the House version ran. I think the Senate version is coming over. So I won't. My name won't be on it. But I, I like the idea that we're teaching kids that a baby is a life. Is it an indoctrination film? No, it, it, it's just a film of what happens from the point of conception to the point of birth. Uh, Delegate Hornby, is there any concern that it's requiring that one specific film that there will have some legal issues down the road? I don't think it's saying that this is the only thing that can be taught. That that was what it was how it was described to us that it was the no, this no, particular it, film. It, it, I think it was much more permissive and saying, hey, listen, this is something you can teach in schools and and maybe maybe even if it is a requirement in a health class it does no harm to show people the biological and, and true i mean i don't know if you guys have watched the, the, the i haven't video, watched it yet no but i'm well, i, I well, guarantee I you i will you now. watch it before you have a have a, a, a an opinion like either way um it is right it's very well well done and i didn't think it was offensive or it didn't it just states the facts of what happens. Are, is that not being taught now in health classes and schools? Uh, I think this is much, this is much more. Um, it, it's. I mean, I think it's like two minutes or two and a half minutes. You can watch it in no time, and it just states, you know, this is what happens after so many weeks. You've got a heartbeat. After this, after this, they can feel. They've got fingerprints. And it just goes through the, the gestation process. And I thought it was fantastic. When I saw, saw it, I was like, I'd be happy to show my kids that. And I'm a pro-lifer, so that's kind of where I stand. Mike, is there an option for an alternative video? Uh, Mr. Doyle felt that this was uh, very much a pro-life video. And he asked about uh, the opportunity to show a pro-choice video. Well, I mean, we've got, um, we, you've, as a parent, you always have an option to, to say, hey, I don't want my child to be taught that. My understanding with this video is that there's no opt-out for a parent to say, I don't want my kid no, to see that. There, there's always an opt-out with the Board of Education um, or, or locally or with a, it's statewide. I, I think there's lots of parents that opt out of certain things, whether it's based on religious belief or uh, yeah, whatever they have, I think there are lots of parents opt, opt their children out of something. Well, not that this is Bible, but in the Metro News article about the video, it said that there was no opt-out uh, option for the parents attached right. to the bill. And I, I haven't seen the Senate version, but um, I think there was an opt-out. Well, Mike, I, has, uh, I asked John this earlier. I always thought that the State Board of Education could just ignore any legislative bill that was what amendment four was about a couple years ago well they can't ignore any bill they just don't answer their how they apply the rule or how they apply the law okay up to them so that's kind of the, the difference. I understand. okay that that's a significant difference in the way i was yeah. explaining it yeah 
Mike, uh, the vaccine bill passed the House. This uh, would be a bill that would uh, lift the mandated vaccine for children attending public schools. I understand this initially started off as a virtual school exemption, got extended to parochial schools and then public schools as well before it got out of the House. Uh, How did you vote on this? I I, I voted no on the, um, you know, I'm I'm a past Rotarian, past District Governor Ferrari. I have been talking around the world for 10 years. 12 years about polio. Uh, So I would be a hypocrite if I voted for that. Um, So I did speak against it on the floor. I have nothing, you know, against any of my friends who who would like a religious um, exemption. Uh, But I felt that it was going too far. I thought thought the bill originates for virtual homeschoolers. I thought that was a great bite of the apple to maybe get some of these homeschoolers back to getting um, in the in the public school system, you know, v- well, virtually. Um, and then there was private schools. I, I, I even went with that. I said, that's fine as long as if, if they're, you know, in WVSSAC activities, they can't do that. And then I went the full religious freedom. So I, I eventually had to just say no. So I think... And I don't know. I don't. You know, I don't know the. I only know two of the senators on a on a personal level. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think that killed the bill, in my opinion. But um, it, it passed the House, needless to say, and it passed overwhelmingly too. It was sixty, sixty something to thirty something. Was this a uh, fear of being reelected vote, or did that many people in the House really believe that uh, the vaccine laws in the state needed amended? Well, if you think about it, in our Constitution, you know, we have the religious freedom. And, and you know, in, it, it was one of those things where I, maybe where they where they whiffed it, somebody was like, eh, no, I don't think that we should do this. But when you're, you're on the board and you are in the public and it is an election year, it's very tough to, to vote against religious freedom. And I just made the conscious effort saying, listen, I'm not a hypocrite. People know me. They know when I was elected that this is my stance and you know i'm not gonna scream at my friends down here and yell at them for for their vote but i personally have to take that stand because that's what i believe in and that's what i've preached essentially over the last 10 years i've been told that this probably won't even be taken up by the house by the senate i'm sorry do do you have any input on uh, what you've heard from the senate well and that's what I told my friends from that, that you know, we're putting these uh, uh, amendments in, as I said, you're taking a good bill and you're killing it because I don't think the Senate will take it up now. I wonder, just because we just don't see that many cases of measles, mumps, rubella any longer, because so many communities have vaccinated well, their children if we just if we've forgotten the horrors of this these diseases that's absolutely the truth we've got 92 percent of the whole population is vaccinated um we have pockets of small communities that are non-vaccinated now uh, we are seeing measles in florida and we're seeing measles in california we're seeing measles in, in pennsylvania um polio is, is something there's only two countries that still have active polio cases and, and those afghanistan in Pakistan, um, but with global travel, it's one flight away. Um, so, for me, it was just one of those decisions that you know, I, I spoke on the floor. I said I've seen these diseases in my lifetime because I grew up in a third world country. I cannot get there, and, and it's a great first world problem to have that we, most of this generation, has not seen those kind of diseases, and we haven't had a, a polio outbreak or. A, a huge wave of one of these diseases really cripple a community. So um, it, it's a it's a first world problem, but it's tough for somebody to say, "Hey, I want to I'm going to give my kid a shot when I don't really think they need it." I think one of the <clears throat> problems when it comes to this argument in particular is that it's been miscast. Instead of talking about individual rights, and uh, we, we need to start talking about the science of viruses and Im- immunizations, and it is. It's inherently uh, self-defeating if I have my immunizations, but if a certain population doesn't and then they get 
the 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 virus viruses live to live and they will mutate into a form that is no that my vaccine will no longer work against because that's what they want to do so by cutting off the population of of potential victims we can we don't we never kill the virus but we just keep it the, the virus doesn't have a place to go you limit once the mutations we, yes and once we establish the route for mutation that's what it's going to do well, I, I think you, you also have to realize that, you know, it, COVID happened and Fauci happened, and there's a lot of mistrust now because of that. So um, I think because of that situation, all the vaccines got, got brought um, brought up. And, and you're right, the, the viruses do mutate and things like that. But at the same time, you know, you, you've got to realize, you know, and the the numbers are people will still vaccinate their kids. Not a lot of people are going to just stop it. It's somewhere in the one percent range. So I feel like I hope that people would still take the use the vaccine for their kids uh, moving forward. Um, but I hope you know we don't have a major issue in twelve years. Matt Harvey. Anything doesn't have to be about vaccine. Well, I'm going to go back to this. Oh, by the, hold on I'll, a second, Mike. Do you have to go? By the way, or are you good? Actually, I'm. Uh, I got to make sure I, I call Barrett back if it's about my bill. I got to get over to GovOrg, so I, I'm good for a little bit. Right. I, I texted Barrett, told him you were on the phone with me, so he's okay for a couple minutes. <laughs> so, so the raw milk. This is a dumb question, probably, but does raw milk have more vitamins and nutrients because it's it's not it's unpasteurized? That's what the science says. Yes. It seems like it would be it, that would make sense to me. Yeah, I mean, it really helps with your immune system, um, especially if you, if you start really early. Um, there are, and I get don't, don't you, I can't quote me as a doctor or anything like that, but yeah, it's got lots of good things. But it does have, and it can have, if not done correctly. The back end of a cow. <laughs> Crescia said you don't milk a cow from the back. By the way, she said that you're way off on that. Not anymore, but yes, I, you I would have, have back in the day. Yeah. Uh, well, any surprises in the next ten days before after cross oh, every day? All right, I'd say yes. The surprises every day. Um, it's amazing how we can fight on a bill for an hour and a half. And then when the board comes on, it passes 100 to zero. And I sit there and I go, what did we just do? So, Any predictions? Any about what could be a surprise coming? I mean, I know that the surprises are. I mean, I mean, I got lots of predictions, but I just don't, I don't see what the point would be. I think there's going to be um, lots of surprises with the budget. I think there's, um, I think, you know, I, I I was surprised that two of the governor's bills didn't make it out of finance um, on the House side. That was super surprising to me. Which two are those? Uh, you have to talk to Daryl Cole, sir. Okay. I think one was a uh, – um, they were cutting taxes, essentially. Michael, final word is yours if you want it. Um, yeah, I mean, last – Yesterday was a super long day. I think we're going to have a really short day today, and that's time to go over and yell at senators and argue with senators, negotiate with senators, get meetings with senators to, to make sure the bills that we have. Um, we sent a lot of bills over, so uh, you know I would, I would anticipate only half of them actually making it, or maybe even less. Um, but it, it's we got through through hump day, and now there's only ten days left. It's Look forward to it. Michael, have Look a good day. coming home, too. I'm sure. Yeah, man. All right. All right. Have a good day, sir. Good night.